your recommended steps to getting your first role in cloud computing, um, what, what would your recommended <clears throat> steps to achieving that be? Yeah, that's an excellent question because I get asked this a lot because I mentor a lot of people and I, you know, one of the, my key goals is to help more people get into the cloud. And what I've realized is there's a five step process that anyone can follow that will help them get that first cloud job. And it's one of those things where, you know, I, I know what it's like to try and break into the cloud. You just want to learn one technology, then the other, you know, one day you're learning Python, the next day you're learning Linux, day three, you're trying to learn Kubernetes. And I find it's really easy to get lost in the weeds and to get confused. And so that's why I developed the five steps. And step number one is to get a learning plan because what happens if you don't have a learning plan is that you just get stuck on what I call a, a, a learning treadmill where you, you, you're you learning all these things, but you're not, you don't feel like you're going anywhere because you're not getting deeper. So step one, get a learning plan. Step two, master the, and for some context, here's the general order in which I tell people to learn things, right? One, learn Linux, because Linux is the foundation to everything. You know, if you can't do Linux, don't even bother. So learn the Linux command line, step one. Step two, you know, get familiar with the, uh, get familiar with the AWS console and start doing some projects, right? You know, create some services, create something in S3 and EC2, just learn how it works. And once you, once you do that, then you can then move on to more automation tools like Terraform, CI, CD, all of that stuff. So that's, that's generally the order in which I'd say learn that. But again, you know, we can go deeper into that later on. So step one, get the learning plan. Step two, master technology fundamentals. What do I mean? So let's say you're learning, uh, let's, let's say you're learning Linux, right? You need to understand why is Linux important? Well, Linux is important because 90% of cloud workloads, at least in AWS, run on Linux. And the reason is, is because if you're working on a Linux terminal, you don't have the graphical user interface, which Windows does, which means that Linux, you can use a smaller instance type, which means it's basically cheaper. And so that's why a lot of companies use Linux. So understanding why the thing is how it is helps to contextualize it. But then you also need to learn the basic commands, right? So a lot of the times people try and go to complicated and complex immediately. They want to learn serverless straight away. It's like, no, learn something simple, right? Mm -hmm. So an example I give is a project where you have a WordPress server, right? Deploy WordPress on AWS, for example. And, you know, so there's the simple way to do it, which is launch an EC2 in AWS. I'm sure Azure has its own terminology, but launch a virtual machine, install WordPress on it. And with WordPress, you need a database. You can also install the database on that virtual machine and just have it in a public subnet to configure it right and just test that everything works. So I'd say that's the simple way to do it. So that's step two, you know, uh, sorry, step three, you know, uh, build simple projects. So mm. after you build simple projects in that technology, and then move on to step four, which is build more advanced projects. So in the earlier example I gave, you had a WordPress server. It's all in like a public subnet to the database, WordPress, everything is on yeah. the same server. So how can we make this complicated? Or I don't really like the word complicated. I'd say more of a real world example because most companies don't do it like this because it's not safe, it's not secure, it's not scalable. So let's say you built this simple project. Now to make it more advanced, you, you, you then take other things into consideration. So how about I do it is that I'd go, okay, now I need some public subnets and some private subnets. And then I'd create a virtual machine in the private subnet and install WordPress on it. But rather than having a database on the same virtual machine, I'd use a managed service. So in AWS, it'd be an RDS instance. And I'm sure Azure has its own managed services. So now you've decoupled the, um, the application, which is WordPress from the database, right? So now they're decoupled. And again, the database is also in a private subnet for security. And what I then do is I'd put the uh, virtual machine with the application in an auto scaling group so that, you know, if it ter gets terminated, another one automatically spins up. And then I'd have an application load balancer in a public subnet. And so the traffic comes through the application load balancer and then into the WordPress virtual machine. 
right. and because and the reason you do it like this is because this is how it's done in the real world and it just makes your infrastructure more secure more scalable more resilient but if you try to do this more complicated thing i mentioned off the bat you'll get lost and you'll get confused however yeah. if you build a simple project which i mentioned earlier you get to work out a lot of the kinks right so yeah. you know a lot of the simple things so by the time you get to the more advanced um uh, project what you're what you're fixing is a bit different because you you've already figured out a lot of things so it just makes it easier to to navigate whereas what i see a lot of people do is try to do the complicated thing first and then get completely lost and the final thing so once you get you know a couple of projects under your belt so you've done some projects using aws service you've done some projects using cicd um so i'll give you another example of a simple and then advanced right with cicd so a simple CI/CD thing is that okay you have some code and then once you you know do a pull request and merge into a branch it automatically gets deployed into a virtual machine right so that's really simple you push your code it gets deployed in a virtual machine great using pipelines however in the real world you might want to have a test environment and a production mm -hmm. environment yeah. so you want to test the code make sure everything works before it gets deployed in production so a more complicated setup then and a more realistic real world setup is now you have let's say two branches in your code repository you have a test branch and a production branch and then also in aws or whatever cloud you have you also have two different servers a test server and a prod server so if you make a change to your code you then merge it to your test branch and then that deploys code to your test server and then right. you can do your test to make sure everything works and then once you're satisfied you can then merge that code from your test branch into your production branch which then deploys that into the production server so you can see again we've gone from simple where it's just one branch one pipeline to complicated and by doing this you you then build up a repertoire of high quality projects you can talk about because again there's a lot of competition so the more you can do the more you can the further you can take yourself the more likely yeah. an employer is going to look favorable on you and so this brings us to the final step which is learn how to communicate your experience now this happens in two main ways the first way is in your resume right you need to know how to write your all the projects you've done, all your skills, all your experience in a way that sort of attracts recruiters. And I see, I review a lot of people's CVs or resumes and I see they don't really know how to do that properly. Either they don't have enough detail in there or they have too much detail or they're not formatting it properly. Um, so learning how to communicate your experience on paper is really good. And then the second way is through interviews, right? So once you actually start getting calls from recruiters, how do you talk about the projects you've done? Like Caleb, you'd be surprised how many people I have mock interviews with. And I'm like, okay, so tell me about the projects you've done. And they're going, um, uh, I can't remember. And then, you know, they don't have an answer for me. Yeah. And you know, this is a question that's definitely going to come up in an interview, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to know how to respond to that. You need to practice. You need to know what the common interview questions are and how to answer them confidently and yeah. competently, right? With a smile on your face and with enthusiasm. So these are, I'd say, by following these five things, so just to iterate, because I know I've said a lot of things. Yeah. Step one, get a learning plan. Step two, master technology fundamentals. Step three, build simple projects. Step four, build advanced projects. Step five, communicate your experience. And that's the five-step framework to get your first cloud job. That is a really good framework. And I'm sure the people watching this who are trying to get that first cloud job will really be able to take a lot from those five steps that you've just shared. Um, one, one of the things that I, I was really interested with was when you spoke about the basic project and then into the sort of advanced project, the basic one was quite simple, you know, create a VM, install WordPress, get a database behind it. And the second one was kind of building that in a way that kind of looked like the real world, having a test environment, production environment, and kind of pushing that through as if it was a company doing so. These steps were really good and, and, and it's really great to hear sort of a framework that people can just go along with and follow to getting their first role. So I hope those watching and, and who are looking to get their first role can really take a lot from this. And at some point we'll have to do an your version with sort of <laughs> your sort of technology. So I know so many people on here are 
very is your focused and you know AWS focused as well. Um, but yeah, that 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 is really helpful.